game changer for people with PCOS for GLP-1 medications like Zepbound, Wegovy, Semaglutide, and Terzepatide. Hi, beautiful friends. I'm Elizabeth, Countess of Shopping. I have had the privilege of being on GLP-1 medication for the last 21 months, losing over 93 pounds, and on my run to 100-pound weight loss. And on today's episode, it's been a must-ask episode to talk about PCOS in correlation of using GLP-1 medications for therapy. And I haven't dived into this topic for a couple of reasons. I've got a ton of scientific research to back up what I'm gonna share today. As always, I'll cite my re uh, resources and cite my sources and put them down in the description link below. Just click that dot, 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 more button. But my whole intention is I am not a healthcare provider, nor do I pretend to play one on the internet. Um, so always talk to your own healthcare provider. My intention is that these videos will help spark the conversation for you to then go off and have the conversation with your own healthcare provider that has access to your medical records, your medical conditions, your medical information, you are being the keyword on there. <laughs> so this is not medical advice, but let's go ahead and dive in because I think it's really important for people with PCOS, if you have it or if your bestie does share this video with them because it's going to be a doozy on some information. Y'all, I got a bunch of cup of coffee too, so I'm jazzed to talk about <laughs> You know I got my rocket fuel. I'm ready to talk about this topic. So PCOS is a multifaceted, intricate issue. And obesity is one of the most important um, metabolic issues with PCOS. At least 50% of people with PCOS are obese. And in fact, it's threefold higher to be obese with people with PCOS. That's crazy, by the way. So like, that's one of the big things is, is people having PCOS. And typically, typically speaking, people with PCOS have low adherence to therapeutic lifestyle intervention. When I read that, I was like big and bold, and I'm gonna cite my source down um, listed below because this is a really good piece of information about um, trying to make these lifestyle modifications, which hello, I don't know about you, but I did since I was eight years old, was on my throat, eight or nine, eight, nine or 10, I, I get confused on the dates, eight, nine or 10, somewhere in that ballpark. I was in elementary school, I started my first diet. Clearly it did not work <laughs> because I then yo-yoed with my diet throughout my life until having GLP-1 medication. This has been the only thing in my life for the last 21 plus months that has worked to keep weight off and continue to lose weight. Every single time I've gained it back every single time. And during the pandemic, oh my gosh, I lost a ton of weight with keto and low carb, but it was off to the races and then gained back even more with the pandemic. So I'm really excited today to talk about this because so many people do have PCOS. Um, and it, it's really important to have this conversation because it may be helpful for people who are not yet on GLP-1 medication, or if you are on, maybe not even realizing how it can help your own PCOS. So Insulin resistance is part of, it's actually for 50 to 80% per the study that I'm citing, uh, which by the way, the study is, um, and again, I'll link it in the description. It's from the National Library of Medicine. It is a year old from when I'm filming this, um, but I think it's well worth mentioning. I didn't know a lot of this information and I feel like I'm in the loop. Like I'm in the loop uh, with GLP-1 medication. I mean, I, I was on the Oprah show about GLP-1. Like I feel like I'm one of, like I was picked for that. Like I feel like I'm on the, the pulse of what's happening in the GLP-1 community, uh, community in terms of lifestyle, not medical style, but lifestyle of it. And I didn't know about this study. So I feel like if I didn't know about it, probably the average bear doesn't either. But it's insulin resistance for 50 to 80% of PCOS patients. Insulin receptor abnormalities with that. And then people develop type two diabetes threefold in individuals with PCOS, right? Like this is just, this is all within our wheelhouse. <laughs> I feel like this is a lot of us, a lot of us, a lot of us. And like I said, this is one of my most requested videos was talk about PCOS with GLP-1 medication. It impairs insulin secretion and resistance, which makes sense of why weight is such a big issue for pe people with PCOS. Like I totally get it and hypertension and coronary artery disease, um, sleep apnea, a bunch of these things go hand in hand also with PCOS, which is in the wheelhouse when we talk about GLP-1 medications helping with sleep apnea. Studies are proving so much of how it's a substantial helper with that. And with heart disease, it is proven that GLP-1 medications, the study was technically on, um, I want to make sure I'm quoting this right. It was on my previous videos. I'm pretty sure it was semi-glutide. I'm almost positive. But if not, terzepatide, I'm lumping those in. Pretty sure it was semi-glutide, though. Showed um, the reduction of, you know, 20% of coronary um, 
cardiovascular issues like heart disease, strokes, and cardiovascular events by 20%. Talking about people with PCOS typically have hypertension and coronary artery disease. It's lumped in that to the two of like other issues. So what in this article it's going through and it's talking about and I, I'm, we're gonna talk about it and then we're gonna have solutions. This is the other cool part about this is I've got action items. I'm like so excited to nerd out over this because as I was researching it for this episode, I'm like, this is so important. And I feel like so many people suffer in silence with PCOS. I mean, there's a lot of gnarly things that happen with PCOS. It's not in this particular, I don't, I don't think I saw it within this particular article, but having um, like facial hair can come with or hair in places that you normally wouldn't with PCOS. Uh, infertility issues, it can jack with your period. Um, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of things related with, um, you know, having babies and things like, like it can, it can be troublesome in the, those areas. So that's why I really like, talking, I really wanted to talk about this topic. I'm gonna go over because here it goes. Talks in this study about GLP-1s, about how it's promoting weight loss um, and the specific outcomes, let me go back over here. Um, with simulation, uh, it talks about stimulation of insulin production, suppression of glycogon secretion, delaying gastric emptying, uh, satiety enhancement, meaning you're full. I do not feel like dealing with the fullness feeling of GLP-1 medication. I really didn't have that whole grasp on that until starting like the woman on the right here being morbidly obese. I was never full really. Like even after eating like 3,000 calories in a sitting, 4,000 calories in a sitting, 5,000 calories in a sitting, to be in a sitting <laughs> and not know what full felt like, to then now feel that is nothing short of a miracle to me. That I literally, I'm like, this is one of the best gifts, unexpected gifts when starting GLP-1 medication. Now, if you don't feel that when you're taking GLP-1 medication, everybody's body's different. And I always feel like I have to say this so loud for the people in the back. You may not feel it on the starting dose or within doses of feeling that fullness or things that I've talked about from my own experience, strength, and hope. My body may be very different than yours and your body may be very different than mine. I'm on the highest possible dose as of currently is that bound 15 milligrams. It's the highest dose. Um, some people, and I still haven't achieved my goal. Some people achieve their goal way lower doses. That's why I'm saying there's a broad spectrum with all of these things too. So if you're not feeling that satiety enhancement, <laughs> like you're not a whack job. People have different varying um, things on the spectrum with it. It also goes on to talk about hunger reduction. Yes. Uh, decreasing energy intake, regulation of appetite and fruit, food reward, which I very much, the regulation of appetite, like now I can be like, I don't need to have a second piece of pizza. I'm actually full after a half of pizza pizza, a pizza and a half, like a slice and a half. I don't need to eat the second slice fully. Like that for me never happened before. And so talking about this, about how um, GLP-1s help with that. So GLP-1s meaning Wegovy, uh, Zepbound, uh, semi-glutide, um, terzepatide, and then for type 2 diabetics, the FDA approval is Ozempic and Manjaro. So talking about these between the intricate interplay between brain and gut hormones orchestrate the roles of both uh, psychological and pharm pharmacological GLP-1 in modulating appetite. So this is where I'm like not a uh, medical person. So let me break it down. You're going to feel full after you have that piece of, piece of pizza. <laughs> And it's going to feel good in your brain. In your brain, I'm like, oh, I'm full. That's what full feels like. I don't need to keep eating. Multiple studies have addressed the effects of GLP-1 um, analogs on appetite, food preferences, and gastrointestinal hormones using varied doses, durations, and assessment um, methodologies. And it goes on to talk more about GLP-1s, which I'm not going to go in in this particular video because I want to get to some of the solutions that they talk about within this study. It talks about physical exercise, which hello, I've been talking about physical, two things we have control over. We don't have control over the Zetbound shortage, Manjaro shortage, Wegovy shortage, Ozempic shortage. We have no control over those. And so I always like to go back to um, things I can change, things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. The things I can change are my physical activity and the food choices. I can change those now that I'm on GLP-1 medication. And so for me, physical exercise, exercise and physical activity, me going on roller coasters and riding horses and walking multiple miles plural in a given day and weight training and Pilates, like all of these things were so foreign to me for decades. Like I haven't done them since I was um, in college. And so now to be doing them as a 40 something year old woman, I'm like, this is amazing. It talks about physical exercise plays a vital, 
vital role in normalizing metabolic parameters. And so I don't know about you, but for me, it was this weird brain shifting that happened with like, oh, I used to not do those things because I was worried I hurt myself or I couldn't, or I could only do it for like two minutes. And I'm like, why bother for two minutes? And so making that mindset shift for me has been somewhat of a process, um, which is why, for example, I didn't go to, into a Pilates class. I started off with wall Pilates and it's been this gradual step stair. I didn't start walking six miles in a day. I'd walk, you know, one mile and just started off with that of like, okay, I can walk. Let me go walk for a mile. And so it's talks in here about PCOS guidelines advocate for a minimum, minimum of 150 minutes of physical exercise per week. So in five days doing 30 minutes a day, that's minimum though. Like they're saying that's a minimum. <laughs> if you did that in a week, that's what? Approximately off the top of my head, like 20, 22 minutes approximately per day if you did it every single day of the week. Moderate aerobic exercise has been shown to um, potentiate insulin sensitivity in PCOS. Studies have indicated that vigorous aerobic exercise and resistant training, meaning weight training, can lead to improvements in insulin sensitivity and abnormal androgen levels in women with PCOS. It means, in layman terms of how I interpret all this medical jargon, move your booty. Get up off that couch. If you're listening to me, go walk while you're listening to me. <laughs> I'll come with you on your walk. I love it. When people in the comments are like, I'm walking while I'm listening to you, or I'm working out while I'm listening to you, or I'm riding the bike, or I'm doing weight training while I'm listening to you. I'm like, it makes me literally so happy. I give you like double tap hearts. You know how on um, certain live streams you can double tap to give someone a heart or like on Instagram? Tap, tap. I give you double taps. Tap, tap for doing that. To maximize efficacy, a weekly regimen should include a minimum of 90 minutes of intensive exercise, meaning get your heart rate up. You can do it with your man if you want. <laughs> just I just wanted to make sure you're paying attention. See, now I got your attention. I just wanted to make sure you're paying attention up in here. Um, so dietary intervention. So we're talking first about the exercise. We can control that, things I can't control. And here's the deal. If you are chair bound, you can do chair yoga. I can vouch for there is a chair yoga program my um, family member had to pay for it, but they said it was excellent. It was by an ex-wrestler. Like, I think it was in the WWE or something like that. And he has a whole, just Google this. I don't know. I don't remember his name. Um, it's paid. And um, if I can remember, I'll put it in the description link below. But it's an awesome. So if you're not able to like do all this other stuff and you just literally can sit in a chair, do chair yoga. It has amazing benefits. It's really, really awesome. And then eventually this family member now is able to do full-blown yoga. Um, they built up to it. Like how I said with wall Pilates. I started with wall Pilates, using the wall with Pilates. And then now I'm doing independent Pilates like with a private person and um, Pilates classes on the reformer, like where you swing your legs all around. <laughs> It's so much fun. Okay, dietary interventions hold therapeutic promise for chronic disease, and so it's talking about like changing your food. Following ketogenic diet has also been suggested to alleviate symptoms such as irregular menses, so your period, and impaired liver functions associated with PCOS. That was within the study. I did keto diet. Many of you know me from doing the keto diet. I could not adhere to continue to adhere to that, and definitely not through the pandemic, and definitely not like that on GLP-1 medication. I do do low carb. People ask me and I'm like, you can do whatever you want. This is just what works well for me. I like low carb. I like the way I feel when I'm eating low carb foods, meaning like leaner proteins, but with keto, it's high fat, moderate protein, low carb. The high fat for me will lead to <laughs> challenges with gastrointestinal issues. And so that's why I don't do the really keto because I can't have that high fat. Like I can't eat a ribeye steak anymore. I'll need a diaper. <laughs> Apparently I've gotten too comfortable on the internet. <laughs> I don't know why. And maybe it was the coffee. Did the accountant put something in my drink? No, he gave me my pink flamingo cup. It matches my outfit. Um, so going back over to these things, it talks about following a reduced calorie diet with low um, glycemic index can provide beneficial um, like things for PCOS patients struggling with metabolic disturbances. And so... It talks about fasting insulin levels and things like that. And so I think working with your medical health care provider, again, or working with a dietitian. Now, I love Join Fridays. That's the um, healthcare company I work with. I love them because they are a telehealth company. They prescribe both brand names and compounds. They do both. 
they have recently changed their pricing model. If you're an OG client, your pricing, you can pick which one you want to do. But if you're new, the pricing includes in there um, your medication costs and also has two times a week to have group coaching with a dietitian. Like, that is phenomenal. I paid so much money to have dietitian coaching and now it's included for free with Join Fridays. I digress, use the discount code QUEEN. But going back over, it's talking about a low, ca reduced calorie diet, which makes sense. Like at the end of the day, I gained weight <laughs> eating 3,000 calories a day, 4,000, 5,000, like it was crazy. The amount of calories I consumed at certain pockets. And that was with me trying too. Eventually I stopped trying and then it stopped even like tracking. Um, but I wouldn't really track, I kind of like eyeballed it because tracking would trigger me at that point. But it makes sense that having a reduced calorie diet, like that just makes sense versus calories I burned. I can see on my Aura Ring, by the way, it's linked on my Amazon um, shopping list down below, my Zepbound Amazon shopping list or for GLP-1 people. I can see how many calories in a day I'm burning. Many wearables will give you that information. Like on Amazon, they have like a $20 watch that can tell you that too. I like the Aura Ring because it also talks about my sleep, um, it talks about your period on there for ladies. It talks about stress levels. It talks about a lot of stuff. Um, caffeine. I mean, it goes in. It's really very in-depth. It's, it's quite brilliant, actually. So it's going through talking about things that um, probiotic, beyond probiotic supplements. So it talks in here also about probiotic supplements. I highly recommend people ask my probiotic things. Again, I'm not medical. Talk to your own healthcare provider, but this is what works well for me. In my daily supplement, Gem Bites, they have prebiotics and probiotics in them. I love them. They taste amazing. They're so good. Highly recommend. Use the discount code QUEEN. If one is looking for additional probiotics, there are pro those are pre and probiotics. With bioptimizers, they have their... Did I pull it over? I don't think I pulled it over. Did I not pull it over? No. Um, it's, it's P3OM. I'll link it down below. P3OM, it's probiotics from Bioptimizers. Bioptimizer stuff is amazing. Anyways, this report's talking about how probiotics can help too for um, GLP-1 medications. It goes on. <laughs> goes, I mean, it, this study is very fascinating. And when I was reading this, I was like, oh my goodness, I'm so grateful I looked this up um, to see the solutions that I can do because taking a GLP-1 medication, it's a tool. There's other tools in our toolbox too that I need to use to continue to have success. And so it talks about um, vitamin D. It's going in and talking about that too. That's helpful for PCOS patients and um, complementing lifestyle interventions and dietary modifications. I couldn't do those lifestyle modifications without GLP-1 medication. For me to address my food and my workouts, GLP-1 medication has been instrumental in that because of the brain connection and all the other connections that it makes. It's wild, actually. What a great time to be alive that we live in. Um, it goes on talking a little bit about metformin in here, too. Um, met treatment with metformin significantly improves BMI, um, serum lipids, and glucose homeostasis. Combining lifestyle adjustments and metformin yields superior results compared with lifestyle modification alone, particularly in reducing BMI. Um, and then the rest of the article, I, I, I think this is so fascinating too about the strong correlation of people with type 2 diabetes and obesity with PCOS. Is that not so validating? I don't know about y'all, but reading this, I was like, this is so validating for me. I felt like such a whack job and such a deficiency in me. It was like, what, air quote, what's wrong with me? Why can't I do this? Why can't I live at a low calorie restricted diet? Oh, it talks about that in here too, by the way. Let me go back over to my notes about how restriction doesn't work for people with PCOS. <laughs> it doesn't work. Um, where did I put that? This was so fascinating to me. A low adherence to therapeutic lifestyle um, intervention, meaning people couldn't stay on the, couldn't continue with it. Like that's what's mind blowing to me of that it's been 21 months for me staying on this train. Choo choo. Like that, that I do have adherence and that, it's been almost two years. That's mind blowing to me that I've been able to adhere to this for almost two years. Um, and so I wanna, I wanna share that about the validity of this, of like, I'm not a whack job. There was nothing wrong with me. My body simply, like if somebody had back in the day, like high blood pressure issues, 
Um, oh, someone had mentioned this comment too before, and I, I want to address it. They were talking about high blood pressure. And I'm like, some people need to be on high blood pressure medication the rest of their life, even with being super healthy, super active. Some people just have to be on high blood pressure medication regardless of the modifications. Of course, obviously, lifestyle modifications make a big difference, obvi. But for some people, they have to stay on high blood pressure medication the rest of their life. For me, with the information I have right now, I suspect I will be on GLP-1 medication the rest of my life. I don't foresee myself getting off of this or pausing or whatever <laughs> I, because it's made such a ripple impact on the rest of my body. My sleep, if you had jacked up sleep before GLP-1 medication, it, raise your hand if you've had massive changes with your sleep. I know I have. Also by taking bioptimizers because of their magnesium, but that's a horse of a color for another day. Um, that's Use the discount code QUEEN. That seven types of magnesium. I had the science data with my aura ring showing my sleep before taking a bioptimizers magnesium and after it changed my sleep dramatically. But GLP-1 medication changed my sleep dramatically as well. It was like this two nuance of like GLP-1 medication and then switching over to uh, bioptimizers. So all of these things to me, I take this article and I'm like, no wonder I couldn't stay on a diet. No wonder it was hard for me to exercise. No wonder, no wonder, no wonder, no wonder, no wonder, like that there is a solution and that this is helping so many people. Now, it talks in here about um, people taking Saxenda and Victoza and this controlled study for six months and things like that. For me, what's really exciting is about semi-glutide, which is Wegovy and Ozempic, and Terzepatide, which is Manjaro and Zepbound. They did not include in this particular study talking about Terzepatide, which is Manjaro and Zepbound. The same thing, by the way. Those two are the same thing, just different FDA um, approvals. Manjaro is for type 2 diabetics, like Ozempic is type 2 diabetics. And for chronic obesity management, Wegovy is for chronic obesity management, as is Zepbound. So this is great information. The one question I do have all the time is like Saxenda and Victoza have been around since 20, uh, they're talking about uh, GLP-1s have been around since 2015. Why did I not know about this? I feel like doctors were so, I, I just didn't know. It was like not talked about. Maybe I just wasn't, I don't know. Maybe it was talked about and I just wasn't paying attention. It blows my mind. I'm like, I wish I had been on Saxenda or Victoza. That was never offered to me, never. And the amount of resistance within the medical community <laughs> with chronic obesity management, I mean, some people even still think, and even healthcare uh, insurance companies think that chronic obesity management is not a disease. <laughs> it's a disease, people, and it needs management. Like, there needs to be therapy and management associated with that. It blows my mind. We got still a ways to go, but we've come quite a way. So this to me, super helpful. And so the study goes on, it talks about how it helps. GLP-1, bottom line, GLP-1 medications help those specific things. Because PCOS is so multifaceted and an intricate issue, it, there's variations of it. And so that's, if you walk away from this being like, I want concrete, like, eh, it's a wide spectrum. It's one of those things of where it's a spectrum. Like obesity is on a spectrum, this is also on a spectrum too. But knowing that the relief is there with these things um, and how it helps and aid on it to help with obesity, to help with these things. So I wanted to share that information. If you have further PCOS studies for me to look at, um, you can shoot me an email listed down below. You can post to my free encouragement group. That's probably the best way is in the free encouragement group. Excuse me because I'll see it because I've managed that group. Um, and if you are on the wait list for the free encouragement group, if it's been beyond a day or two, shoot me an email. That probably means your account is flagged as spam. I do not hire anyone else to run that group. It is me. No one touches it. Occasionally, the Duke will come on and cheer people on. I'll be like, hey, Tracy said she lost 10 pounds today. And he'll go, yay, Tracy. Like, <laughs> it's kind of the extent of my help. <laughs> um, and it really is a family affair. Um, but I don't ever say last names either to, uh, for to keep people's confidentiality. Like that to protecting that group to me is so important. Like here on my YouTube community, I'm like a mama bear too about the Facebook community. And on countessofshopping.com, really amping that up. That has been a big priority for the count and I, um, me and the count does edit. I'm not the best writer, but I do write those articles and construct them and he tries to review them for me. But it has on there a ton of articles on countessofshopping.com. We, I released, um, Two, we've released like six articles this week. I'm working really hard over there to also have written in addition to audio, like the videos here too. So if you are a person like me, I'm the best way I learn for me is um, reading. 
And so there are now um, a lot of lifestyle things on there on countessofshopping.com. That is linked down below too. So, and if you're brand new, check out all of my, like if you've just started Zepbound 2.5 milligrams or the Wegovy starting dose, or you're started on compound semi-glutide or terzepatide, um, I've got a whole beginner guide too that you're welcome to go check out as well. So, um, accountability question today. What are you doing today to move you closer to your goals? Tell me in the comments. Two, your emoji of the day. He's thinking about like different emojis and I was like, hmm, what should we make it? It's going to be the letter. No, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. I was like, YouTube will flag that. We're going to make it turtles because turtles win. Do you guys like this turtle? Pa I painted it. It was one of those painting kits. Who is it from? Nettie Price. I love Nettie Price, but she has painting kits. So that's where I got my turtle from was Nettie Price's painting. So I painted that technically. <laughs> But it is from her kit, to be clear. But today's emoji of the day is turtle uh, emojis of the day help me to get to know you better because I care. And two, um, I'll pray over you. And if you don't believe in prayer, I'll uplift you in positive thought because this is an inclusive group. Okay, sweet friends. I love you guys so much. I hope you got value out of this video. If you did, click the like button. Click subscribe. Um, we're on the run to 100,000 subscribers. We're going to do a huge... The count doesn't know it yet, but I want to do a $1,000 giveaway, a multiple giveaways totaling $1,000. That's my goal. Still trying to figure out how I'm going to do that, but we're, I, I, that's my intention at least. I'm putting that out to the universe to make the things come together to do that. Um, and share this video. If you have a best US PCOS, share this video. They may just think, oh, it's for those skinny Hollywood people. No. I mean, it's helping with things like sleep apnea, reducing heart uh, issues, heart attacks, strokes, cardiovascular events. Now PCOS is in the, 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 the pile, so to speak. Um, it's really cool. What a great time to be alive. Woo! Okay, I love you so super much. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. I'm Countess of Shop and count my blessings because life is delicious. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, guys. Love you.